Okay, well, I am so excited to embark upon this journey with all of you. Here is my inspiration shot. It's from a place in Big Sur off the coast of California. Um, it's these windswept, gorgeous green fields and ocean waves and these beautiful sandy paths and rocks. I'm not going to paint exactly this, but I am sure that many of you have places in your memories or in your hearts that you'd like to be able to recreate or in your own interpretation. And I'm gonna show you how I might approach this in um, an abstract way. So it has sort of the feeling and the memory of the place without exactly painting the place. I am an abstract painter and um, I paint intuitively. So that means that I don't exactly know how this is going to come out. And the process almost becomes like a meditation. Um, once I get going, I really follow what I'm seeing in front of me and respond to that rather than the image that I have here. So I have this here just as a, a beginning place to let you know um, where I start from. And where I end up is a bit of a journey and adventure and we'll see. And I know that where you end up with your paintings is going to be a completely different place too and I'm excited to see that. So I'm gonna show you what materials I have. And again, I've been very careful to let you know that any materials that you have in your home right now is great. You don't need to go out and buy special materials for this. You could do it with markers. You could do it with acrylic paints. I'm going to be using oil paints and um, some wax added to the oil paints. That's called cold wax medium, and I'll show that to you in a second. Um, but really in the spirit of um, abstract art and playfulness and creativity, I'm encouraging you to use whatever you have in your home. I have a piece of, this is called Multimedia Artboard. It accepts all sorts of paints, and that's what I'm gonna be using to paint on. I have some tools to spread the paint with, and I use a palette knife, and this is like a little squeegee clay tool. Any tool will be fine. You're welcome to use brushes if you want to use brushes. I'll just put that there for now. I have a variety of paints that I'm gonna be using. I am gonna be using a limited palette, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, often, if we use some form of constraint, if we um, contain ourselves um, in doing so, a, a lot more possibilities can open up because it gives us the opportunity to turn our brains off, really. So I'm using a color wheel, and when I talk about using a limited palette, I'm going to limit myself to just a couple of colors. And they don't need to be realistically what's here at all. Again, this is my impression of how I felt when I was in the place. But if you look at a color wheel, this is a traditional color wheel, and um, I'm going to focus on this color here, which is a blue-green color. And then I'm gonna go opposite the color wheel and get to a reddish-orange. So I'm gonna use these two colors and then you see there's a triangle here. This is called a triad. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of this red violet on this corner of the triad and a little bit of that yellow orange. Okay. So the colors that I've chosen are cobalt teal in this case. Opposite that for my red that leans towards the orange, I'm using a color called naphthol red. And for those two colors in the corner that I just showed you, I might use a little yellow. I've got Hansa Yellow Light and a little Dioxanine Purple. Again, I say might because I'm going to be responding to the paint at hand, to the painting as it unfolds. I'm using white and this color called Chromatic Black. Okay, I do have a couple of other blue-green hues in here. Uh, I've got this Phthalo Turquoise. And um, just for fun, I've got some ultramarine violet and indithrone blue, which are in the blue family. I'll see if I, I want to add these or not. And I have some painter's tape. I like to surround the edges of my paper with this. And I have uh, some palette paper. You could easily use wax paper for this if you don't have a palette or palette paper. I have some paper towel, and then I also have this wax. This is called cold wax medium, 
and it looks just sort of like this buttery wax and it adds texture and I add it to my oil paints and I show, I'll show you how I do that. But again, any material that you have is just fine. And I have a marker and I'm gonna show you right now what I'm gonna do with that marker. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just look at my, my picture and um, besides the essence of the place, how it made me feel, um, what the air felt like, what it smelled like. Um, there are many, many ways that we can approach a painting and um, in an abstract vein. Lots and lots of tips and tricks and tools that I teach in my classes. Um, one idea is that it's much easier to begin a painting when you've got something already on your canvas. Starting with a blank canvas can tend to be a little overwhelming. So one idea is to look at the generic shapes that we've got go going on in here and then use those shapes in our painting. Okay, so I'm just gonna boldly take this marker, just hopefully you can see this, and I'm gonna begin to outline some general shapes that are going on here in the landscape. I'm not going overboard in terms of outlining it. I'm just seeing some larger shapes Okay, so I'm also looking while I'm doing this for lights and darks. And again, in a very, very general way, I might add another shape here. And these shapes might stay for my final painting, they might not, but I'm gonna use them for my beginnings and then see where the painting goes. I just wanna show you as a reference point, I've taken this and I've, um, put it in black and white. So this helps me also to see where are the really dark shapes and where are the really light shapes. Because when I mix my colors next, oops, I am gonna to wanna to make sure whatever colors I use, that I have some darks. You can see here's my darks. Here's some dark. And here's some really light. Here's light. Here's light. And then this is an area that's, you can kind of see in the middle. I'll use that squiggly line just to show you. Okay, so I wanna make sure that I have a variety of really light colors, dark colors, and colors in the middle. And they do not need to match what I've got here exactly at all. Okay, so let's move on to mixing some colors. So I have this palette paper here and I have my limited palette colors. And what I'm going to do is begin mixing these. And this is really fun. I'm going to encourage you to just try to enjoy this process because what I'm doing right now is mixing these colors together until I get ones that I really like. This is where the piece of the painting process comes into play that's sort of unpredictable and that makes it unique to you. I'm putting the four different colors that I talked about from using my color wheel, just the initial colors, the blue green and the red orange, and then a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple over in the corner. I've got some white and I've got some black. Now I am going to begin without overthinking. Again, a lot of abstract painting is turning our brains off what I'm going to do without overthinking this process is begin to mix these colors in varying amounts till I get ones that I really like. In my particular case, the way I paint, I don't necessarily want it to look exactly the colors of this painting. That's the fun of it. You are welcome to make it the exact colors of the painting if you want to, but I don't often do that. So I do want to tell you in my case, I am using some cold wax and this is a pile of cold wax right there everyone can see that and it's to pace and before I begin I usually mix about half and half maybe a little bit less wax maybe 30% wax to 70% paint ratio and again you do not need to do this nor do you need these exact colors or exact materials I'm sharing with you my process so I'm just kind of getting that going
Okay, just wanna make sure my paints are all set so I don't need to worry about the wax after this. The wax lets me work in layers a little easier and also speeds up the drying time and that's gonna to be to our benefit. Okay, so I have my paint set out on my palette. Just move this up a little bit. Make sure everyone can see. Great, and now what I'm gonna do is check this out. Here's this turquoise color in its pure form. That's gorgeous. If I made a painting with just these colors, it might be really beautiful, but it might be too much. I think about painting sometimes as a theater production or a musical production. It's important that there's not too many stars of the show. And that's if there's backup singers or backup musicians or actors, it helps support the, the jewels, the ones who are coming forward, right? So if I take this, color, for example, and I add a little bit of its opposite, and look, that's how much I'm adding, not a lot. If I add it to this super vibrant color. Look what happens to that all of a sudden. It's A, a gorgeous color, and B, it tones it down, so you can really see the difference between this bright color and this one, which is more muted. I could take it one step further and say, well, that's a beautiful darker color. What happens when I add white to it? Because remember, I'm looking for a variety of tones of darks, really darks like I showed you, really lights and all this stuff in between. Well, oh my gosh, look at this incredibly gorgeous. It's like a very light lavender that I got from adding this mixture with white. I'm just gonna add a little bit more in this pile. And I'm just gonna keep going till I get a bunch of colors that are between dark and light and medium, and also colors that I'm responding to. Now this is interesting. Again, this is real time. I just wanna show you my process. Um, and I'm just playing with it. So this color, in, in my attempt to recreate it, you can see if I add a little bit more of red than blue, you know, little little varying amounts. Um, it's a color that's a deep dark red that's more toned down than my very bright red, but also quite beautiful. Well, I might say to myself, well, what happens if I add that red with a white? Well, that's a stunning pink, right? Really beautiful. I might just do the same thing. For example, I need darks. What's gonna happen if I mix my black with a red? That's interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going, playing with my colors. And if I get a color I don't like, guess what happens? <laughs> I don't use it. I haven't done that much work so far with, what happens when I'm mixing red and yellow together, these two little colors off to the side. You know, that changed it very subtly, but oh my gosh, is that beautiful. I added white to it, that's stunning. I love that, wow. What happens if I do red and purple together? Sometimes that makes a kind of a green that's very stunning. And you might say, well, Lisa, that doesn't look like green up there, but look what happens when I add white to it. And actually, indeed, that isn't a green, that's more of a brownish gray. Now I could say I like that, I actually do like that, that's quite beautiful. I'm running out of space here, just move this pile over. But now I've taken a little bit of that, and let's see what happens if I add a little more yellow to that. Just playing around with the colors. Again, I've got this limited palette. Now I've got a little yellow and a little green I'm adding to that, and let's see, a little blue-green, and wow, all of a sudden, that is stunning and appealing to me. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend a lot more time in this. I'm, I, sometimes I just mix colors on my palette, but I'm doing the, I mean on the painting itself, but I'm doing the same thing in effect, right? I'm mixing all these colors in varying amounts and then finding my favorites and using them. So let's start. I've got my board here. And the first thing that I always like to do, again, 
optional step is to take this painter's tape and I tape it around the edges. And the reason that I do this is because I really like how it looks when I take it off afterwards. It creates its own beautiful frame. Okay, so I'm just going around the edges. You can see I've got these gloves on, which I'm not sure I mentioned or not. And I like to paint with gloves on because sometimes I get in there with my hands. And it's just easier for cleanup afterwards and it's safer too to keep the paints off your hands. This is like the first day of an adventure on the first day of summer. This is the stage that we're at. I'm so excited. I have no idea where it's gonna go, but I know I'm gonna be in for a really fun ride. All right, let's start now. I've got my palette, I've got my paints, and I've got my image that I'm just gonna look at. I'm actually gonna use this black and white image just to look at because what I'm gonna do is, now I can draw this in. If I were painting by myself, I probably wouldn't draw it in, but I'm gonna draw it in for you because I want you to be able to see it because it might be a helpful tool for you. So I have a, these are basically crayons. And I'm just gonna begin by just drawing in some of these general shapes. Again, I'm not holding my pencil like this. I'm not making it exact. I'm just really drawing in some of the general ideas that I've got on this landscape here. Here's my hillside and horizons. Here's my horizon line that's all ocean there. Here's a dark, and then I've got some rocks over here, rocks and grasses. And here's a light, and then I've got a nice light area right here. Okay, that's how I'm starting. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my palette knife, and I'm gonna choose, first put in my darks. So I'm gonna choose some dark colors and put them into my spaces that were dark. And then I'm gonna take some light colors and put them into my spaces that were light. And again, this is all going to be changed over time. I'm not exactly sure what's gonna show up, but I will tell you that I have fallen in love with this color that I made. It's this sort of deep, dark, reddish purple. Like a mauvey purple. And I'm just gonna kinda of mudge that in there. Here, I'm not, not to be too cutesy, I'm using my palette knife. Why do I use my palette knife? I use a palette knife because when I paint abstractly, again, I've said this, um, one of the tricks that I find is really helpful for myself and for students is to turn your brain off. Let's turn our inner critic off. Let's turn our exact nature of day-to-day -day living, <laughs> of things that need to be accomplished, let's Let's turn that off. And one way of turning off that inner critic is by allowing ourselves to be inexact. And I'm using a tool that is not allowing me, I don't know if you can see this or not, it's not allowing me to be very exact in my placement. And I like that. I tell you, I'm liking that a lot because it really encourages me to play. I had run out of that purple color, and you'll see. I'm, like I said, a lot of times I mix the paints on the painting as I go. And so this is exactly what I'm doing. At some point I'll stop talking so that I can just focus and zone in on the painting itself, and you can watch and certainly ask questions. But for now, I'm just kind of walking you through what my process is. I've got some darks here. I also see from the picture, um, there's another dark that I just want to add in. And I'm just going to try to 
to recreate a little more of that purplish color in some way because it was so, so pleasing. Okay, check it out. Okay, I've got some darks laid in. Let's see what happens next. Let me add some lights. Well, I have some gorgeous lights that I already made on my palette. And I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen here, but I'm adding them in. And again, not overthinking it, not trying to be exact. I'm not, you know, I don't have to follow these lines exactly. They're just the illusion of some kind of shape. There's one light I'm adding in. How does this color look here? I'm gonna add this here for another light. And then I'm thinking about what is the sky. Maybe I'll use a very light version of a blue, bluish purple. That up here. Okay, so I've laid in some darks, I've laid in some lights, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, God, that's a big mess, and it is right now. I try not to think of it that way. <laughs> I try to think it in, of a, in a more loving, kind way, because honestly, the chaos, if you allow yourself the playfulness and the chaos, and then just trust that you're going to be able to turn that chaos into calm, um, the results are much more playful and meaningful than if we approach the painting from a very sort of constrained um, standpoint, if that makes sense, from the beginning. If I approach this from a very constrained standpoint from the beginning, what's gonna happen is um, it's gonna feel tight. The, it's just gonna have a feeling that's the opposite of fluid and relaxed and exciting. It's going to feel tight and um, constrained and I don't want my painting to feel like that particularly this subject matter I'll tell you being in a place like this was anything anything but the feeling of tight and constrained right it felt wild and free and exciting so I'm using my palette knife you know you might be using a, a tool that you've got at your at your fingertips there you might have a brush so you could begin to experiment for example I'm putting in my mid tones my my middle tones here and just exploring a little bit what that means and it looks like I've got some um, pretty kind of reddish pinkish I'm gonna add a little bit more blue I think I want some blue hillsides and I'm not sure if this is the exact color scheme I'm gonna end up with. I know my palette, right? So that's cool. But I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen. I'm just laying in the initial places and then I'm gonna show you how I, how I would look at it afterwards. Oh, so as I'm doing this now, like for example, right here, something gorgeous just happened and it was the mixture of this light blue with this pink. And um, the way that the two colors mix together, I'm finding quite pleasing. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Just make a mental note to maybe come back to that to explore. Now this, I was saying, whatever tool you're using, you might say, oh, let me use a different tool. Your tool could be your hands. I'm using this clay tool here. just as a fun thing, Let's, you know, I just, everybody has things that work for them and things that are not as easy or that don't uh, encourage creativity. So it's your job as an artist to figure out which tools, which methods, which colors, which mindsets are gonna work for you. And it's my job as your teacher to explore you to lots of things that work for me in the hope that some of them 
will spark your own creativity and self-expression. Okay, so I've switched tools, and actually I'm liking this tool. It's making me happy. <laughs> I almost have everything filled in. Let's see, I have one more block to fill in, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. And um, this was sort of a mid-tone, so what I'm gonna do, See what happens if I take that gorgeous watercolor in its pure form, because that water sure was beautiful. And add that in right there. Now, the reason I showed you the black and white photograph was that sometimes colors take over and it's hard for our eyes to see what's dark and what's light because the excitement of the color um, takes front and center. So you might think to yourself, wow, that blue you're putting in is not a mid-tone. It's not in the middle. It, it, the reason that it looks so dark is actually because it's the purest color that I've got so far on my palette, and it's grabbing our attention. But it is indeed not as dark, for example, as that black, or this dark purple, or this dark purple. But I am noticing how beautiful that looks. Okay, so I'm just at this point fidgeting a little bit and then I'm gonna set it to dry even just for a minute or two to set up before I begin a, the phase of refining and turning this into a beautiful piece of meaningful art. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna set this aside just for a second and let you know that I'm gonna pop up on the screen um, a couple special offers, and I want to tell you about those. So I'm going to get my hands free of paint. And I'm going to tell you what I'm popping up on the screen right now is one offer for a class that I've got coming up that I'm super excited about. Um, right now, it's a limited enrollment. I'm only taking a small cohort of folks and um, the offer is limited to, because I'm giving a very lovely discount of 40% off. Um, it, and it's called Courage, Connection and Creativity and it's a, a six week really in-depth course on finding your own creative voice, lowering your stress level, connecting to a cur courageous mindset and learning to paint powerfully um, in, in a six weeks course. And um, it's a really great opportunity to join a cohort of like-minded individuals to um, begin to understand the power of your own expression. Um, also begin to understand the, the beauty and the um, ability of painting like this to help keep you centered and lower your own stress level. There's all sorts of information on the link that I'm including, um, but I do want to tell you there's a coupon code that I'm including two. It's part of my Paint It Forward um, initiative because I really believe that creating beautiful art and sharing it with others is just one of life's greatest gifts. So it's part of my own Paint It Forward initiative. I've been giving away free paintings every week and certainly this, um, this freebie webinar, webinar course that I'm doing right now is part of that. And my discount that I'm applying to this course is part of it because I'm hoping that you all will take it and share your joy and your beautiful artwork with others. So the code, as I've written down below, is paint forward to get the discount, and I'm gonna include the link right there. The second um, uh, discount and fun freebie that I'm gonna offer, and I'm including the link right now, is to another course of mine, which is more straightforward. Uh, it's a self-paced course, um, and it's learning to paint abstract landscapes and I'm offering a, a lovely 25% discount on that as well, and, and including the link too. The first course, Paint It Forward, is, um, I think I had said, it's a, it's a live cohort, so it's limited enrollment, and um, there's live chats that are going on, and, um, and, a, and a support system that's in place for us to interact with one another, and for me to interact with you and your art. The second course is purely self-paced, and last but not least, even if you don't, um, decide to enroll in either of those. I'd love to have you all in our Facebook group. 
Um, and that is free of charge, and I have included the link in your thank you page, so I encourage you to um, join me there. All right, so now with that being said, let's take a look at what we have. So at this point, um, to be quite honest, this is when I zone in and look and see what do I love and what's working and what do I wanna see more of and what do I wanna see less of. So I'm just gonna to begin to play, to be quite honest with you. Um, in both of those courses, I have lots of tools that I go over with how exactly to refine this painting. But I'm telling you the biggest thing that you can do without taking a full blown on course just by this little mini session that we're doing together is just, it's, I don't know if any of you have ever been rock climbing or like I said, a long journey. It's putting one foot in front of the other and responding to the paints. And sometimes it's a tiny little movement. Sometimes it's a much bigger movement. It's hard to tell. I just begin to play with my colors and explore a little bit. Sometimes I get a color like I'm working down here. I'm not sure I loved that color that it turned into, so I'm just going to begin to play. Sometimes I'll use the tool when the paint is still wet. And try to dig in. This was a gorgeous pathway that somehow led here, if my memory serves me correctly. So I'm gonna just capitalize on that memory. Kind of draw that in a little bit as I'm working on this. Just going back and forth. Just because I've put one color down that doesn't at all mean that I need to keep that. Nor do I need to keep these shapes. You know, if there's something about these shapes, like look, I'm looking at this one and uh, I'm not sure I love it. So I'm just, if there's a section of it that I'm not sure I love, like this top section, I might see what happens. Now that was a happy accident and I liked it. There was some dark gray that went up here and all of a sudden it opened things up. So as I was saying, I just kind of see what happens. This is letting me know I might need something darker right here to define this shape. Sometimes I'll go with the movement of the area. So for example, in my mind, this was a pathway and I know that it was drawing me, my eyes, my spirit wanted to walk down there towards the coast. So I'm making those sweeping movements with my paint and in this case with my, the tool that I'm using. Okay, and indeed I'm liking the, um, the color. So I tone that color down a little bit too and I'm liking that as well. Well, let me fix this a little bit and see what happens. There's something super pleasing about the blues that are appearing in this painting. And I'm wondering, as I'm looking at this, if I want to kind of tone down this red section on the left. I liked what happened here when I added that dark purple just a little bit around the edges. So I'm just exploring. I'm letting the paint really do the exploration for me. This is the part where I just tune in to what's going on. And without me being in front of you or doing your painting for you, I am encouraging you right now to just trust your own intuition and your own self about each section that you're working on of your painting and the painting as a whole. What do you love about it? And what do you feel like exploring a little bit in a different direction? And I would encourage you to adopt the attitude of, 
well, what if? You know, like I said at the beginning, it is like a big old beginning of summer exploration. What if I decided to take the train <laughs> to this unknown place on a journey I've never been to before? What if I decide to use my paintbrush or my tools or my colors in a way that I haven't tried before? What happens? And some unexpected results begin to take place. So I'll tell you, I do want to tone this down. I'm liking what's happening here. And I'm also, there's something lovely about this green and how it's interacting with the blue. So I don't want to necessarily cover this up, but I'm just examining what happens if I allow myself to begin to explore this shape in a different way. Again, I don't have to cover the whole thing. In some ways, it's much nicer not to. I'm responding to what I see in front of me. Now, there were a lot of grasses here, so sometimes I'll, I'll um, create some depth and some fun. The paint is still wet, so I can do this, right? I'm not painting each blade of grass. I am painting the illusion of some grasses and what that looks and feels like. And I know I said to you that these are the colors that I'm starting out with. I'm not always sure what's gonna happen. Pink was just a little overpowering for me. So again, I'm just toning it down. There's something about this green that is speaking to me, possibly because it's reminding me of the moment in time, right? Also because I think it's working with this painting in a way that I'm really loving. When we, oh, that was another happy accident. Okay, I added some, I was gonna tell you something and then I, added a color that I was just experimenting with what if, and actually I loved it. I put some of this darker blue in this corner, and something about that is reminding me of these windswept grasses I'm turning out to be quite beautiful. So this is a very prominent area of the painting, and I guess what I'm starting to feel is I want some darker tones that are feeling a little more harmonious. And I have my color palette mixed here. And honestly, a lot of this is trial and error. And again, this is where I'm encouraging you to trust yourself. So um, I laid the palette out ahead of time so I know it's gonna work. There's all sorts of science behind color theory that I share in my classes. But the short version is, if I start out with colors that I know are gonna work and the formula that I gave you of using the colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel, and then those other two triadic colors mixed in, I know more or less that the painting is going to work harmoniously. And then some of that is just what I'm feeling like I'm responding to. And I will just leave you with this past, with this parting thought, um, almost parting thought, is that some of the very best and most powerful paintings are the ones that break all of the rules. Really, some of the most profound painters of our time, you know, if you look at someone like Picasso, Matisse, you know, those are all painters that dared to break the rules. They spoke from their heart. And in doing so, their paintings um, spoke to millions and millions of people. So I am encouraging you now to follow your own heart and um, listen to it and continue working this painting. 
and I can't see, wait to see what you show up with, what you, what you uh, end up making on yours. And I'm gonna get my hands clean and take the tape off so I can show you what I've come up with on mine. Now this might not necessarily be done. Sometimes what I need to do is take the tape off or take a picture of it and take a step back and then reevaluate the painting, right? I, just from looking at this, uh, there's something about this area that is still too um, maybe bold and I really want, this is so pleasing to me right here. I'm wanting somehow this, remember we were talking about supporting actors? I want to tone this down so it supports, I'm feeling like this area is the star of the show. So what might I do with that? Well, this, this grayish tone that's very toned down might be more appropriate in this, in this sense. So I, you know, I just might play with it a little bit and see, well, what happens if I really make a beautiful toned down area here? And I'm not sure that that's going to work but I might just explore that a little bit. You know, what if I just bring this in a little bit more? Just for fun and see what that does to the painting. Does that help me move towards this calm, pleasing area here? So I just continue to play and explore and work this and I'm gonna um, take my gloves off and turn this camera off for a moment so I can take a step back and show you my final product without all the mess of the outside here. Sometimes this gets in the way and so um, it's amazing how just taking that off allows us to really begin to see the painting for what it is. Okay, I'll see you in a minute and I'm gonna show you what I came up with.